Today I'm taking a look at a special product category that far too many of you underestimate or more so can't imagine how they could effectively put such a product to good use. I too have been thinking of ways on how to use it. That is why I'm introducing you to one of the fastest USB 4 NVMe SSD enclosures on the market and I'll also share three practical use cases with you. Furthermore, I'll also give you a useful tip will show you a trick on how to speed up any SSD in an external SSD enclosure. The specific product we'll be dealing with today is the Zyk Zykdrive Z666, a model name I highly dislike and I know I'll get picked on for that by some. The product shown here can be purchased on Amazon at a regular price of around 140 euros over here in Europe, but on the official Zyk website without middlemen and fees, The Zyk Drive is currently available for around 111 euros, but usually one could make use of a discount code. Anyway, I'll show you what is achievable with the Zyk Drive in everyday life, what speeds we can expect with it, how stable it runs with different devices, and what else you should consider before purchasing. Included in the packaging, the SSD enclosure itself, a really nicely sleeved USB-C cable and a quick start guide. But not so hasty, there's another shorter USB-C cable hiding and inserted into the SSD enclosure. Now they are advertising truly great transfer speeds. On one of the enclosure's ends sits the USB Type-C port, which actually supports USB 4 with a bandwidth of 40 gigabits per second. Of course, it's also compatible with Thunderbolt 4 and 3, and very importantly, is backwards compatible with slower connections such as USB 3.2 Gen 2 and 1 with respective bandwidths of 10 and 5 gigabits per second. But even USB 2.0 is supported, whatever poor soul wants to put up with that. The outer shell of the SSD enclosure is made out of transparent acrylic plastic. This actually serves a purpose because the rest of the case itself relies on an aluminum shell to keep the NVMe SSD nice and cool because those tend to get quite warm. Because the aluminum can get a bit uncomfortably hot in some cases, the plastic shell serves as a protective layer for our sensitive claws going by the name of fingers. As already shown, a short USB-C cable is cleverly integrated into the case if you don't want to constantly carry the longer one with you. To install an SSD in here, you don't actually have to slide off that plastic cover like I did here, but remove the top cover as a hole instead. Then insert the M.2 SSD and secure it with that small rubber plug or whatever you may want to call it. No tools are required for this, just a tiny little bit of skill. A thermal pad for the SSD also sticks to the aluminum cover, so do not forget to peel off the protective film before making use of an SSD in here. M.2 drives in the tiny 2230 to all the way up to 2280 form factor can be installed here. Such NVMe SSDs can run at a maximum of PCIe 4.0 x4 and the ASM 2464PD USB 4 controller at the heart of the SSD enclosure takes care of that. Now before I demonstrate the speeds achieved and tell you about the tip I mentioned a while ago, here are the various use cases for such an SSD enclosure. Use case number one, use an NVMe SSD as a fast external SSD extension when a device doesn't have enough storage space and doesn't allow for an internal upgrade. What I mean is, you run games or programs directly off the external drive. Alternatively, we could be looking at huge 4K video files, which you could then access directly for your project, allowing you to edit and work on videos, even if your device, such as a mini PC or laptop, doesn't actually offer enough storage space. Use case number two. Use such a fast external NVMe SSD enclosure for SSD cloning. This is especially useful if you frequently need to perform cloning jobs, like I do. Whether it's RAW files or cloning Windows, it can be an advantage if such an SSD enclosure actually supports fast NVMe SSDs and doesn't impose any significant speed limitations. Use case number three, a portable NVMe SSD. Because such an SSD enclosure is quite compact and even comes with a small concealed USB cable, it is perfect for your pockets. 
Effectively, it's a portable storage device, a USB flash drive replacement if you will, only significantly faster and more stable. Now to that promised tip or trick of mine. I installed the Samsung 970 EVO Plus with a capacity of 1TB in the SSD enclosure. Actually, it's only a PCIe 3.0 X4 base drive and not 4.0 X4, which the case is supposedly capable of. If I install the SSD in question internally, in the M.2 slot, I'm expecting read and write speeds of around 3600 and 3200 megabytes per second, respectively. However, the initial test with the SSD inside today's Zyke drive enclosure only went to show a result of a measly rounded up 3400 and 800 megabytes per second. That's not exactly great. As a matter of fact, this happens with many external SSD enclosures out there, and it's nerve-wracking to many users. So here's a trick to get more out of the SSD. It's once again a Windows-related issue, so to speak. The SSD enclosure and the installed SSD must of course be connected for this to work. Navigate to the Device Manager, locate your SSD in the external enclosure, and switch to better performance. A restart is recommended afterward. To be on the safe side, we head to the same location again and check whether Windows also enabled write caching for us. If it is not enabled, you should manually enable it and then perform another restart. However, it is important to note that you expose your SSD, or rather the data on it, to a greater risk if you don't properly disconnect it from the PC. So make sure to always use the eject function if you want to disconnect. The before and after results are truly impressive. Nonetheless, we are losing out on quite a bit of performance compared to a direct internal connection via the M.2 slot. At least with my test configuration with the Geekcom Mini IT13 mini PC. Unfortunately, the achieved speeds also depend on the device, even though such a mini PC, laptop or desktop PC might theoretically offer such a USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 port. Therefore, you cannot rely on manufacturer's claims 100% of the time, as we also have to consider our own variables that come into play, limiting our performance. Still, I am very satisfied with the read and write speeds achieved, which in practice, in real-world applications, has a very positive effect. Files over 5 GB can be moved back and forth in a matter of seconds. The temperatures after running a few benchmarks with my Samsung SSD inside the Zyke drive enclosure are also looking good. No worries there, but this ultimately depends on the amount of heat your SSD outputs. There was no sign of any instability during my testing. There were also no interruptions or drops in speed. Conclusion: The Zyke drive Z666 SSD enclosure is impressive. It's of high quality, offers adequate cooling for the SSD, offers us two USB-C cables to make use of, can be used without the need for tools, and is of course not only compatible with PCs or Macs, but can also be connected to phones, tablets, game consoles and the like. So something like that could be seen as a great extension for one's device if it didn't come with enough storage space to work with. Or if you simply need to take certain files with you, files that are speed sensitive like 4K video files are, you could basically edit videos and projects directly off the SSD in here. That's just an example. The price might appear a bit steep to some, but I do think we get quality here at the end of the day. So I can highly recommend the Zyk Drive SSD enclosure. What would you use such an NVMe SSD enclosure for? Maybe there are other cool use cases for it that I don't know of yet. As always, I would really appreciate a like, but feel free to make use of that dislike button if you really have to. With that in mind, thank you all for watching and until the next one.